Today, major cryptocurrencies started the week in the red. Coinbase responds to reports that it could be ceasing services in India. And one of the authors of S&P Global's new research on stablecoins breaks down those findings. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World, I'm Kate Rooney. Crypto prices are down to kick off the week as of noon Eastern. Bitcoin dropped more than 2.5%, trading just above $25,000. Ether fell more than 3.5%, dropping below the $1,600 mark. And Ripple's native token, XRP, sank 6% as the SEC countered the firm in an effort to appeal the groundbreaking XRP decision, where a judge ruled that the token is not a security in some cases. Okay, let's talk about some of the top stories. The X account of Ethereum co-founder Vitalik Buterin was reportedly hacked. That breach reportedly led to people clicking on a malicious phishing link and caused losses of hundreds of thousands of dollars. Coindesk reported that over the weekend, $691,000 had been drained from victim wallets, with the vast majority of that value being in the form of NFTs. On Saturday, Buterin's father, Dimitri, announced on X that his son's account had been compromised. The post with the malicious link has since been deleted from Buterin's X account. The Ethereum co-founder has 4.9 million followers on the platform, formerly known as Twitter. Next, G20 leaders are moving forward with their global crypto framework. That's according to a local report that said on Saturday, the G20 member nations meeting in India endorsed the Financial Stability Board's recommendations on regulation and oversight of crypto assets to mitigate some of the risks associated with them. Several countries, including Australia, Brazil, Canada, the UK, US, and EU would be among some of the regions impacted by that framework. The crypto asset reporting framework was first introduced last October by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development and was designed to offer the automatic exchange of tax relevant information on cryptocurrencies. G20 finance ministers and central bank governors will reportedly discuss the advancement of the framework at a meeting in October. Last, a Coinbase spokesperson clarified that while its exchange remains inactive in India, the crypto firm's wallet and tech hub remains active. This comes after confusion surfaced about the company's India operations after it had sent emails to some customers asking them to withdraw funds by September 25th. A person familiar with the situation told us Coinbase is not ceasing services in India and that an email was sent to some account holders last Friday, noting that the email does not pertain to India or Indian operations, rather it relates to Indian customers using the platform in other jurisdictions. In a statement regarding Coinbase's India operations, a spokesperson said that the firm stopped allowing new user signups on the exchange in India back in June, but still offers live products, including its Coinbase wallet. The spokesperson added, that Coinbase is, quote, committed to India over the long term and continues to explore ways to strengthen its presence in the market. All right, for our main story, S&P Global released research last week on stablecoins and noted that they provide a bridge between the highly volatile cryptocurrency ecosystem and the traditional financial world. So Crypto World's Jordan Smith spoke to one of those authors to discuss the report's findings. All right, Christina, thank you so much for being here. S&P Global has this new research into stable coins, their valuations, and their depegging events. So first things first, can you walk me through the methodology of this study and why you picked the stable coins that you focused on? Thanks for having me. Um, we, uh, we wanted to do a deep dive into the stable coins as a follow-up of our uh, prior articles. Uh, we have published a general article on uh, on crypto valuation a year ago. We wanted to focus this time more on stable coins, although they are aim, aiming to maintain the same um, uh, uh, dollar amount, dollar uh, peg. They are different based on the collateral, um, based on uh, the stabilization mechanism. And we realized that uh, indeed, for stablecoin, also the high frequency data is paramount to get an in-depth uh, analysis. So um, we picked um, uh, five uh, stablecoins um, that in total make up more than 90% of the market cap of stablecoins of uh, more than 120 billion. And uh, we focused on... Um, four that are uh, uh, backed by real world assets and uh, one that is backed by uh, DAI that is backed by uh, crypto collateral. 
when you're looking at the types of collateralization, is there one that bears out as sort of more stable? Is it that they're more focused on real world assets as you label them, things like cash or U.S. treasuries, or for instance, some use smart contracts in order to keep their price stable. Was there something in the research that showed one was better than the other? One, first of all, some are more um, have more transparency than others in terms of the the, the collateral um, that are backing them. So, um, uh, in terms of uh, type of collateral. Um, DAI is uh, collateralized by um, uh, by uh, uh, crypto assets, and we found out so the contagion event that took place um, between USDC and um, and DAI uh, during that weekend um, was uh, also caused by the fact that the collateral um, backing DAI had a big concentration in uh, USDC. So uh, what happened during that uh, uh, weekend, uh, the uh, USDC um, uh, price declined to 87 uh, cents um, after um, uh, SVB um, got announced that uh, they are in trouble. Then um, uh, Circle announced that 3.3 .3 billion of their cash reserves are held to SVB. This caused um, a domino effect, right? Market um, market panic, and um, um, as a consequence, the price uh, deteriorated, and the uh, and the coin depegged. And uh, what we found out is that indeed Dai followed, and um, we calculated some uh, metrics over that uh, uh, period. We found out that the price levels co highly correlated, co almost to one. Over the over that weekend, let's talk about that connection between stablecoins and banking. This this research points to trading volatility coming down on the weekends, um, which you attribute to these stablecoins relying on traditional traditional payment rails. Do you see that connection between banks and stablecoins becoming less of a problem or less frequent as the technology grows, um, or has that trend uh, over the course of your research? been that they've gotten more in line with banking hours over the past two years as, as they're growing the reserves? Yeah, actually, this was uh, an important point in our research. We wanted to see whether indeed we can isolate a section on weekend events. Um, so we looked um, at the uh, volatility um, over the entire um, um, uh, week, 24-7, 365, and then we excluded the weekends. And uh, uh, for two of them, for USDC and DAI, we saw that the volatility uh, almost uh, even more than halved over um, uh, 12 months and 24 months horizon. So we think a lot uh, uh, is attributable to what happened during that weekend. Um, in which um, the DPEG was so uh, uh, pronounced for uh, USDC and for DAI. Um, in terms of um, um, connections between uh, stable coins and banks, yes, it is true that they, uh, especially those that are backed by real world assets and fiat uh, money, uh, uh, they rely on uh, uh, payment rails during uh, normal. Uh, uh, business hours. Um, and um, actually, that was one of the reasons that prompted um, um, uh, Circle and Coinbase to pause conversion from USDC to US dollars during that weekend. Um, looking toward the conclusion of this research, uh, you point to good governance, collateral, and reserves as a way to mitigate price volatility. Uh, is it realistic to expect in the future a, a stable coins to remain firmly pegged to their value in, as in, in the industry as the industry grows? Um, is there a potential for a truly dollar pegged stable coin or is this volatility something that will just stick around even as uh, as the industry is adopted more and more? Yeah, much of um, uh, again, the uh, the events that we uh, list as uh, root causes for DPEG, they won't go away. There will be market volatility. Um, uh, there will be other events, uh, regulatory challenges. Um, we don't know 
uh, how the future will develop. This is a very dynamic um, ecosystem. Um, but uh, we think that, uh, I mean, it depends um, where uh, you hold your collateral. Uh, it depends how um, uh, concentrated you are in certain types of collateral. It depends um, of the stabilization mechanisms uh, for, um, for uh, uh, crypto-backed um, uh, stable coins. So I think we will see uh, these mechanisms, um, how they evolve in the future and how uh, they are put to work to bring uh, back constantly the stable coins to parity. Okay, that's all for Crypto World today. We'll be back again tomorrow with a lot more. We'll see you then.